Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God wants me to pray for somebody. I don't know who. But that's what I'm going to do. Lord, you are God of gods, King of kings. There is none higher than you. There is none equal to you, God. Father, you know what's going on in the life of the person who is watching this video right now, God. You know every tear that has dropped from their eye, Lord. You know every tightness they've ever felt in their heart for whatever reason, God. You've been watching them their entire life, Lord. Have you been sitting back doing nothing? No. But you've been waiting for them to see that you're there and you're willing to heal their land, Jesus. Father, your word says that if we humble ourselves, pray, seek your face, God, turn from our wicked ways, then will you hear from heaven, Lord. People are crying, they're crying out to God, they're crying for help, they're crying for assistance, and they don't hear any response. All they hear is silence, God. But your word says that we have to humble ourselves, pray, seek your face, and turn from our wicked ways. Only then will you hear from heaven. God, I come before you on behalf of somebody who's been crying to you and hasn't heard any response. In order for them to hear from heaven, God, in order for you to forgive their sin, Lord, and only for you, the only way for you to heal their land, the land of their heart, the land of their lives, the land of their soul, is for them to seek you and to turn from their wicked ways. God, somebody's hearing this prayer right now and they're wondering, what are my wicked ways? Lord, show them. Show them through your word, through your Bible, God. You have spoken every single detail we need to know about this life. You have given us clear instruction as to how we get to Christ, how we get to heaven, how we get to you, God. How we get to the throne and the kingdom of God. It is only by perfection. But we're all imperfect. Nobody's perfect. But Jesus is. He walked this earth and didn't break your sin a day in his 33 years of life. He was, he is perfect. And he is our substitute for our imperfection. Jesus, there is somebody who is reaching up and who needs life now. There is somebody who is on the edge. They are on the breaking edge, Lord. And if you don't grab their hand now, they're going to jump. No. Grab their hand, Lord. Grab their hand, Jesus. Grab their hand and pull them out of the horrible pit, God. Pull their feet out of the merry clay, Jesus, and set their feet upon a rock, upon the rock of salvation in Jesus Christ, and establish their every going, establish their path, establish their purpose, establish their destiny, God. You are not a God that makes mistakes. You are not a God that creates a person on accident. Everything you do is on purpose. Everything you do is for a reason. There is not one person on this whole earth who is created on accident. I don't care what they've done, who they've been with. Jesus, show them that they have a purpose, but that purpose cannot be revealed until they get to God. They cannot get to God until they bow down and confess their sins to Jesus and ask him for forgiveness and repent and turn from their sins. Only then will you hear from heaven and heal their land. 
You're the only one who is able to heal and take away and give rest, eternal rest. Before I met you, God, before I encountered you, Lord, I had friends. And I could tell them my issues. I could tell them my heart problems, God. But all they could do was console me and say, oh, girl, well, I hope it's going to get better for you. But you were the first one and the only one that I was able to come to. And you, you took them away. You didn't console me, God. You didn't console my heart, Lord. You took the burdens off of my heart. And you're the only one that is able to do that. There's somebody sitting there who's listening and saying, I don't have any burdens. My life is great. My life is perfect. Oh, really? God, show them who they are in comparison to you. They think they're a good person. Show them how good you are. Show them how even though every single day they don't think about you, they don't consult you when they make decisions, they don't pray to you, but yet you've given them life. They've completely ignored you or they only run to you for big reasons, God, but yet every single day you show up with oxygen in their lungs. Could they ever continually serve somebody who has turned their back on them the way that they turn their back on you, God? That's the definition of unconditional love. That's the definition of good. And nobody on this earth, including myself, is good. I've gotten angry with people when they turn their back on me. I've held unforgiveness. I've held bitterness in my heart, God, and I know I'm not alone. But when I realize how much more I've offended you than people who've offended me, and yet you still sent your son to die for my sins. I didn't ask him to. That's just how much he loves me. That he didn't want to see me be separated from you for eternity when I die. Lord, there's somebody out there who needs you, God. Grab hold of their hand, Jesus. Grab hold of their hand, Jesus. Pull them out like you pulled me out, Lord. Show them their wicked ways, God. Show them that you can heal their heart. You can heal their land. You can heal their families. You can change them from the inside out. You can transform them. People can change the behavior of a man, but only you can change the nature. In Jesus' name, I pray that you heal their land. Amen.